All right, guys, let's check out something I don't do very much. This is a Timpano amplifier. This is a 3000.1. You can see it is made in Brazil. This is a Brazilian style amplifier. This little guy here, no bigger than my hand, is 3000 watts. We're gonna find out if that's true power, which I'm certain that it is, but there's a couple caveats to this. This amplifier I'll post right here was 150 bucks on the Father's Day sale. $150 for 3000 watts is kind of a big deal. So why would you want something like this? Well, obviously it's cheap and it's pretty high on power and it's small. So we start looking at this thing, you're gonna see just how small this thing actually is. But as I've said before, there's some caveats to why this power is so cheap. So in the side of the box, there's a little sheet here. We'll check that out in a second. There's also this really cool Timpano sticker and of course the amplifier. So for 150 bucks, you really can't expect much out of it, but we'll look at everything this thing has to offer. So this is the 3000 watt amplifier right here. You see that it is four gauge input and 150 amp circuit breaker. That tells me it's probably more of a 1500 watt RMS amplifier with a 150 amp circuit breaker here. It shows the connection and it shows some specs. So let's check this out. It says power output at 14.4 volts. This says you got the two ohm version, the one ohm version, it says right here, uh, 3,700 watts RMS at two ohms, 2,500 watts RMS at four ohms. And it says at 12.6 volts, this guy is rated 3,000 watts RMS at two ohms and 2,000 watts RMS at four ohms. So I would expect to see something pretty decent out of this guy. So let's check this guy out. It's pretty tall. It's kind of thick, but it's really small. It's about as big as my hand. So it's all gloss black, which is really cool. It has made in Brazil on it. This is the two ohm version. Clip, protection, and power light. This one does not come with the remote. We can see here it's got four gauge power input terminals. Those are pretty small, that kind of concerns me. We can see it has two fans to try to keep this guy cool. 150 bucks, 3000 watts, this little bitty amplifier. Hell, even if it makes 2500 watts RMS, that's pretty tough. You can see on the input side here, it's got our flat on and off, boost, crossover, and the gain in the input. So why don't we go ahead and hook this up to some power and RCA and see what it'll do. We'll put this on the little dyno stuff and we're gonna see exactly how much power this thing makes in a dyno application and see what we're really dealing with here with this $150 3000 watt amplifier. So as you can see, I have this thing hooked up. I have zero gauge coming in so we can get as much power of this as we can. We're hold steady on 14.4 volts on our power supply and our lithium bank. Let's turn this on. So you can immediately hear these fans come to life. They're roaring away. We have our meter set up here. We have our resistor bank set to two ohms. So we're gonna start playing some 40 Hertz through here and see what we can get out of there. And then I'll tell you about some of the caveats of this amplifier when we're done. You can see right here, we have our 40 Hertz detect. Let's run this up to clipping and see what kind of power we make. Okay, right there, 2,994 watts at two ohms is what this guy makes. I've done a couple more tests and it's pretty consistent right around the 3000 watt mark at clipping. So this amplifier does make indeed 3000 watts RMS at clipping. That's pretty good. The highest test I've got with my batteries charged up pretty good is 3076 watts at 14.4 volts. This is pretty good. So if this makes 3000 watts and it's so cheap, why would you want something like this over say something like this? The big difference between this guy here and that guy there is this is a full bridge amplifier. So while they're efficient, they also lack in some other qualities compared to a big half bridge style like that. A big half bridge that's full of MOSFETs like this has only pretty much one thing better than this. That's a little thing called damping factor. The damping factor is the ability for the amplifier to speed up the woofer and then slow it down. So essentially the brakes.
This guy has no brakes. This guy's going downhill, it's going downhill fast. While this thing has the ability to create frequency, create voltage at astounding current and pretty good efficiency, what it lacks in is the ability to control the woofer. So if you have long bursts of a long drawn out tone, uh, this is gonna be really good. You're not gonna notice the difference in sound. When you have the frequencies that randomly change very quickly, something like that is gonna sound a little bit better. It's been, however, done in a double blind test where people can't really tell the difference between this 3000 watts and that 3000 watts. Anything more than say 140 decibels, it all kind of just sounds the same. Yeah, this may blend some frequencies together versus something like that, maybe a little bit more punchy. It's gonna be really hard to tell. So is this a good amp to buy? I can't tell you that. It's cheap and it's fun and it's a really good way to realize just how big a power wire you actually need for 3000 watts. Cause it's not a joke. 3000 watts is pretty serious stuff even in today's category. While lithium batteries and big alternators make a little amp like this be able to produce 3000 watts all day long, it's still a pretty low quality amplifier. It still has some quirks like a full range and other stuff that you have to tune around. Uh, is it better than like a full on half bridge amplifier? You know, I'm not gonna say no, because it might be, guys run these all the time. This would be equivalent to like a Tarams or something and Tarams has a pretty good name these days. So if you could pick up one of these, you need 3000 watts and you have the ability to power it, go ahead and try it out. You see what it makes right here. The numbers don't lie. Now this wouldn't be a tech video without showing you the insides. So let's check it out. So this essentially is just a transformer. All it does is takes voltage and current here and turns it into voltage and current here. The difference is it's using frequency. So it's adjusting the frequency of the voltage and current coming in compared to what's going out. And that's what makes the sound. So these things are made very simple in the fact that all they have to do is convert low voltage high current to high voltage low current at a pretty good efficiency. And you can see the very thick windings on this transformer is what makes it produce the high current on the output terminals. The high current is what makes the high wattage. It's also the advent of newer silicon, like these MOSFETs, that are allowed to produce a much higher current. So hundreds of amps instead of dozens of amps. So at hundreds of volts, hundreds of amps is thousands of watts. It's a pretty simple concept. Very minimal filter capacitor, very minimal rail capacitor. This right here is why this doesn't have the authority over the woofers in comparison to an older model. Let's check out something a little bit bigger. So using this AT3K, for example, you can see this has one, two, three, four power supplies for theoretically the same wattage. It also has much larger rail capacitors and much more filter capacitors on top of that. You can see it's lined with silicon for the power supply and it has a great big output MOSFETs. The filters on the outputs are also very large. There's other things in here like soft starts and whatnot that make this good to have. But let's check out this one again for just a little comparison. The output inductor, this is a very high current output inductor and it looks like they have it double wound for running double duty. Whereas here we just have two very smooth output inductors. And these output inductors is what buffers all that current that comes back in eddies to come back into the system here where these can then shed that off as heat. Making the voltage for the output terminals doesn't really create heat until the current's being drawn. When you stop the woofer though, like the brakes, it pumps that electricity, that current, back through these and burns them off as heat in the heat sink. You see this guy right here doesn't have that ability. So because it has so fewer MOSFETs, it has to shunt hundreds of amps through these tiny little MOSFETs. While it can do that, it just doesn't do it very efficiently. So in general, this guy needs much fewer components because it's not doing that one big job. It's all gas, no brakes. This is all gas, lots of brakes. Does it matter? I don't know. Again, like I said earlier, a double blind test showed that over so many watts, the human ear really can't identify these in a use case scenario. Now, if a professional is listening, they can tell the difference in most cases between something like this and something like this. But is it worth the extra cost for a low guy if all you're running is 3,000 watts? This is very expensive. 
This is not, you choose your game. These are not really designed to last. Some do, some don't. This is absolutely designed to last. It really just a matter of what you wanna do. If you wanna buy something like this just to try it out, get your foot in the game, get something like this later, sure. But if this is all you're gonna buy, all I can say is, you know, just be careful. Whatever you do, be careful, big wires, all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.